Vic Mignogna is a successful voice actor and speaks to us today from Los Angeles. Vic, how did you get from the dream to the reality of starring in and producing the Star Trek Continues web series? A couple of years ago, I, I got the idea after working with some friends on another Star Trek production called Star Trek Starship Farragut. I decided that I was going to try to make my own and see if I could do it better than anyone has ever done it. These are the voyages of the Starship Enterprise. Its continuing mission to explore strange new worlds, to seek out new life and new civilizations, to boldly go where no man has gone before. I've seen the episodes. It's like going back to the 1960s and turning on NBC on Thursday nights. Unlike the modern Trek movies, which have nonstop action sequences that sometimes distract from the storytelling, your episodes are character and plot-driven. I guess that's one benefit of not having a mega-million-dollar budget. Anyone that knows the original series knows that what made it great was not its action sequences and its mega-millions of special effects. It was ethical stories, morality tales, social commentaries. That was what made Star Trek great, and that's what my desire was to return to. Tell me this, Vic. Where does the financing come from? So the very first episode, I funded that effort with the understanding that if we made one and people liked it, then we would launch a Kickstarter and ask people to help us make more. Another question a lot of people are wondering about, how did you get permission to use copyrighted characters? Well, we didn't have permission, but that's because we're not making any money. We're not allowed to. It's a licensed property. What we're doing is purely for love of Star Trek. And to be honest with you, there are probably a dozen other Star Trek-type fan productions out there. And CBS has been very gracious to allow them to exist as long as they don't attempt to monetize. I'd like to compliment you on the actors. They resemble the original cast more so than the actors in the recent movies and they really bring their roles to life. Where did you find this talent? As an actor, I wanted to be able to do those kind of things, like they did in the original series. So I looked up friends of mine that were good actors that I felt could fill these roles well, and they're doing a wonderful job. I noticed in the closing credits, Lou Ferrigno in one episode and Erin Gray in another. Also, Michael Dorn and Marina Sirtis both from Next Generation, took turns as the voice of the Starship Enterprise's computer. And speaking of credits, I noticed you listed Ignite Church at the end of every episode. What is its connection with the web series? The building that we lease in Georgia, our studio is on one half, and Ignite Church is on the other half. The church has been very, very gracious and generous and helpful in allowing us to use their space whenever we're shooting. Uh, they've loaned us extension cords and cables and, and helped us out when we needed help. And they are perfect examples of the kind of people that you would expect from a church. Back in 1969, NBC cut short the Enterprise's five-year mission by two years after 78 episodes. How many episodes do you plan for the continuation of the mission? We're going to try to average two a year. We could do more than that if we had the money and the scripts, but we're going to try to do two a year as long as we can. Vic, you are an inspiration to Star Trek fans everywhere. Thanks for speaking with us. My pleasure. Thanks. Take care. Vic Mignogna plays Captain Kirk on Star Trek Continues. He's also producer and writer for the show. You can watch the web series at StarTrekContinues.com. I'm Steve Eastman for Wait Till You Hear This. Discover more stories like this one on our website, WaitTillYouHearThis.com.